Hi there, I'm Fernando Bernal. Welcome to the Physiology Matters podcast. Today's episode revolves around the topic of cranial electrotherapy stimulation. The use of electricity as a form of therapy is not new. It's as old as the electric eel, which was used about 2,000 years ago by the ancient Egyptians, the Romans, the Greek, for the treatment of pain. Fast forward to our current times with modern technology and a better understanding of the brain has led to creations of devices that can deliver current into various regions of the brain in an effort to treat various conditions of neuroelectrochemical origin. One such device is the alpha stem. Today I'm joined by Dr. Josh Briley. Briley? Briley, yes. PhD, who is the Clinical Education Director for Electromedical Products International, Inc., the manufacturer and distributor of the alpha stem devices. Dr. Briley is a licensed clinical psychologist. After earning his doctorate in clinical psychology in 2003 from the University of North Texas, he begins his career at the Federal Bureau of Prisons, where he focuses on drug treatment, crisis intervention, and anger management. He was quickly appointed leader of the crisis support team for each institution he worked in, as well as appointments as regional assistant team leader. Dr. Bradley then transferred to the Health Veterans Health Administration working in a small community outpatient clinic in Central Texas, where he specialized in individual and group therapy for PTSD, depression, anxiety, and chronic pain treatment. Dr. Briley has also owned a private practice, taught online on the graduate and graduate level courses, and conducted teletherapy for betterhelp.com. He currently serves on the Daily Life and Workplace Stress Board for the American Institute of Stress. Dr. Briley, Thank you and welcome. Thank you. It's a joy to be here. Good. Could you give us an idea? What is the difference between a clinical psychologist and a general psychologist? Uh, Really, so like the difference to me would be more like somebody who has a doctorate in counseling psychology versus clinical psychology. So clinical psychology focuses more on um, the more serious mental health issues uh, schizophrenia, bipolar, uh, you know, more of the personality disorders. Not that counseling psychology doesn't. I'm not trying to diminish any of my colleagues out there that are right. in the trenches doing hard work, trying to help people live their best lives. Um, the counseling psychology, uh, at least in my experience and, you know, talking to my colleagues and my co-students at North Texas, um, th- their courses were more in like family therapy, um, kind of general, um, you know, everyday stress-related things, as well as, you know, the, the mental illnesses as far as depression, anxiety, PTSD, substance use, all of that. So it's just very slightly different training backgrounds is all. I see. So, so it, it, would you say then that a clinical psychologist is a, a- step before a patient may have to use some type of pharmaceuticals and go to a a psychiatrist or something like that? Um, Actually, it's generally the other way around, uh, at least in this country. Um, And in most Western (laughs) Western societies, generally we get referrals and it's clinical or counseling psychologists, LCSWs, LMFTs, you know, any, anybody out there doing therapy. Uh, We tend to get referrals from either psychiatrists or, from general physicians who have already prescribed medications. Um, And then, you know, they know that therapy can help with that uh, or the patient doesn't want to take medications. And so they, they're referred for therapy. Hmm. And as a clinical psychologist, uh, how do you integrate alpha stem into your practice in in the clinical setting? Okay. Um, so I actually began using alpha stem while I was at the VA. Uh, so about 2018, I believe, is when I finally was able to kind of get my hands on one, start using it with my patients. Uh, and I just incorporated it into the normal um, services I was already offering. Uh, so I had nine therapy groups a week. I had um, you know, individual sessions throughout the day. 
uh, crisis intervention sessions. And um, so I would offer them all an alpha stem to use during session. Um, they could put the ear clips on, we'd set it, you know, make sure we had it set correctly for them. And then, you know, we'd go on with group or individual as normal. And with my VA, I had to do two trials before I could order a device for a veteran. So we would just do it during our normal course of, you know, during our normal sessions. And then I would document, you know, their uh, pain rating, their emotional distress rating before and after, demonstrate, you know, document that I had trained them how, and then they had shown me how to use it. So they had proficiency with it. And it worked well enough, like word of mouth got out among my veterans. And it went from, you know, especially here in Texas, mental health is always kind of a last resort. Like I'll, I'll go see you when, when, you know, I've, you know, as, as like the last thing before I just completely lose it. Right, um, right. Texas very much has, and, and for better or worse, Texas very much has a pull yourself up by your own bootstraps mentality. And especially when you're dealing with an alpha male type population that veterans tend to be talking about people, sharing your emotions, you know, admitting that you're having problem is, is hard and feels like a weakness. So they, you know, it, it's kind of our last resort thing. Um, and so I went from, you know, oh, you're the psychologist. I don't, I don't want to talk to you or I'm only here because my doctor is requiring me to come see you once a year to, um, and that definitely wasn't my experience with everybody. I mean, I had well over 150 people on my caseload uh, at any one time with between groups and individuals. So, you know, it's not like I was sitting there doing nothing. Um, but all of a sudden I became the most popular provider in the clinic because word of mouth was getting out about this alpha stem device and, you know, how much better my patients were sleeping, how less keyed up they were all the time. Uh, the veteran spouses were talking to each other and, oh, you've got to send your veteran in to go see Dr. Briley because he's got this magic box that makes everything better. And so all of a sudden I became very, very popular. Um, you know, and some people only came in and got the alpha stem and then I would only see them like when they came in for something else in the clinic. But a lot of people I was able to get plugged in to my normal services as well. So it, it, it actually incorporated very, very easily into what I was already doing. Um, and then I found, uh, you know, many of my veterans were able to at least come down off their psych meds. A few of them kind of came off of them completely. Uh, came down off needing narcotics to maybe just, you know, less addictive pain meds or even no pain meds. Uh, so it really was a game changer. I was telling everybody about it. I told all my colleagues in the clinic, you know, all the physicians and nurses got them all hooked up on it so they could see what it was like. Um, started telling my uh, other, you know, other psychologists and other clinics in the, in the central Texas VA system and kind of helped them get established and showed them kind of my templates and how I was using alpha stem. So I got them to be able to offer it to their veterans. Um, and it just flowed very, very easily into how psychology was already doing things within the VA. Hmm. So, so did they take the unit home or it was only used when they were in session with you? So this, one of the things I love about alpha stem is it's designed to be used by the patient at home. Um, so I would do the two trials in the clinic, which is the least I recommend for any provider to do. Um, that way you show them how to use it and then they show you, they know how to use it. And then plus you get a chance to see, you know, how well they're going to respond. Um, and so that way, you know, that's you, you aren't giving them something that's just going to sit on the shelf. Um, you know, you, you are pretty sure that they're engaged, they're going to use it. And then um, prosthetics would order one um, and ship it to the veteran. And a lot of them would, you know, they used it every day, every other day at home. Or, and, and a lot of them would bring it into session with them. And so they would put it on during their group sessions and put it on during their individual sessions. And what we found was when they did that, when they wore an alpha stem during session, we were able to get into the meat of their problems a lot quicker and easier. Um, Cause you know, when, when you're coming in to, to talk to a therapist, you're not coming in to talk about the good things that happened to you in your life. You're coming in to talk about the painful things that are very emotionally driven, very emotionally laden. And as you talk about them, the emotions come up 
Um, we that happens with any strong memory. Um, so an example I would I give patients is, you know, if you really kind of bring up the memory of your firstborn child and start to talk about it and start to tell people about it, those emotions you felt that day also come up. The excitement, the nervousness, the happiness, assuming it was a good experience. Um, all of that comes up, but because it feels good, we don't stop it. So we don't think about it. But if you're talking about a painful memory, those emotions come up, but they're painful. So we push them back down and we try not to think about it, try not to talk about it. So when you're in therapy, those are the very things we need to talk about. And when those emotions come up, um, one of my veterans described it as holding a beach ball underwater. You can do it for so long, but the longer you do it, when you finally lose control of that beach ball, it's going to come, you know, if you just push it down, let it up, it's just going to kind of bounce back to the surface. If you hold it under for a long time, when it finally breaks free of your grasp, it's going to come up and hit you in the face. Um, and I thought that's an excellent analogy for oh kind of when most people come into therapy the fourth or fifth time they've been hit in the face. Um, so, um, you know, and they still, you know, and they bring that method of trying to deal with the pain into therapy with them. So they know they need to talk about it, but it hurts and they don't want to talk about it. And then when they do talk about it, all the emotions come up and especially with the population I was working with, um, you know, there's a lot of anger behind what happened to them. Um, you know, either they felt like something didn't go right or, you know, their buddy that got injured or killed shouldn't have, and they, they're blaming somebody or they're blaming themselves. Um, there'd be a lot of uh, sadness and depression that came up and it would get overwhelming and flooding. And there were several times where, you know, we, I would keep them in that moment for a little bit. And then I'd be like, you know, I mean, they're, they're, get, they're, they're getting to where they can't handle what they're feeling. Um, and I, you know, I didn't want to have them walk out more emotionally unstable than they came in. So it stopped the session. We would deescalate, we would calm down, you know, kind of shoot the breeze a little bit. And then that would be the end of the session with alpha stem that didn't happen. So they would still feel the emotions. They would talk about what they went through, no matter how painful it was, tears would flow. Um, you know, you could see like, you know, the teeth would grit if they were angry, they'd clench their fists, you know, they felt it but they were able to talk about it, talk through it. And then when the, the story was over, they kind of naturally deescalated and went back to calm on their own. And I saw, I, I heard parts of their experiences that I had never heard, even after almost a decade of working with some of these men. And um, they progressed so much more quickly. Um, and there were a few that I actually saw once we, you know, kind of worked through, okay, there's this, what we call the index trauma. So the index painful event. And then once they got that dealt with another one would pop up and be like, okay, my turn. And the theory in working with somebody like that is that each successive one is supposed to be easier for them to cope with and, and process and deal with. That's not actually my experience. Um, the emotions are painful regardless. And so with Alpha STEM, they were able to do that much more quickly, much more easily. Um, and it just made their life better. It made my job easier, uh, made our time together way more productive. Um, so I, you know, that, and that's one of the reasons why I was reaching out to everybody I knew going, you've got to try this with your veterans. Trust me, you know, <laughs> it's, right. this, this is amazing.